All right, the Audible is on the air. Kimbo Camber here with you. Alan Pupar from uh, Dolphins.com is with us. And, Alan, it's the time of year. The uh, the rookies are in town. The veterans are in town. Uh, organized trainings, the first uh, OTAs where everybody's on the field. I guess this is phase three. Uh, I'm trying to get used to the new the new terminology about OTAs. You had phase one where basically phase one is just the rookies going through indoctrination, right? Phase one is conditioning. Conditioning was phase one. Then you had the draft. Then you had phase two. And Which is some on field work. Some on, no some seven off. Seven. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a little, little, little confounding, a little confusing. But anyway, they're all out in the field. They all, all got on the field yesterday and today. No media availability, so we didn't get a chance to, to see anyone. The media availability is tomorrow. So we'll get our first chance to look at the guys that are out there on the field. But you had a chance to speak to uh, some of the guys here as they came to the podium. We'll get to that to a little uh, in a little bit here. If you're watching us, you're watching us on the Audible. If you want to get your questions in, just go to your uh, message bar down at the bottom of the page. Send it in. We'll get you on the air and uh, let you know as, uh, as much as we can about uh, what's going on. A little, little, little frustrating. feel like a little handcuffed here with the guys out there practicing. And, you know, it used to be where you could go out OTAs, watch them practice, and kind of get a, a feel for them. But now that's, you know, things are so defined with the National Football League. And you see a little bit of video from the guys out there today. And that certainly is is one of the big questions. I, th- I know that everybody tomorrow in the media is going to be looking for H- how is Ryan Tannehill moving around for all intents and purposes, at least when you talk to people, talk to Adam Gaze, talk to other people around the organization, and, and you talk about him. Um, it just seems to not, not skip a beat. Avoided the surgery, allows him to go through these activities as well as training camp, and, and I don't think they're expecting any uh, any hitch in his giddy up between now and, and the time the uh, the season begins. Alan, no, Adam Gase said as much a couple of weeks ago when he when he spoke to us that basically he saw no difference whatsoever yeah. in him. This was during phase two, and then now we've spoken to Anthony Fasano, we've spoken to Jay Ajayi, and they both talk about. That he looks great. He's yep. moving around fine. He's you can you can see the brace, but it you, you see no effects of it. And everybody talks about how much of a leader he's, how much he's taking charge of the offense. Mm-hmm. All things you want to hear, and like obviously the hope is he can he can pick up where he left off last year before he got hurt. And you you get a chance to talk to some of these guys, Alan, and and you know from from me away from the away from. The field when I see these guys around town or this and that, there's a genuine enthusiasm about this season for this football no team. Uh, and I think to me, when you when you, if you look for you know things that that say, well, why do you say that? Well, I, I keep going back and I've, I've mentioned this a number of times on the program. Uh, Dave Poloka, we had him on here. Uh, a, a few weeks ago, and he said, "Look, I had a program for these guys, the conditioning program for the off season. These guys came in in better shape than I thought they were. Mm-hmm. I had to advance my program yeah. to keep a, to keep ahead of them, give them a you know, give them that carrot to chase after, which to me is a good sign that guys know how important this season is and, and weren't settled, weren't satisfied with where they were last year. Knew they had to go out, knew they had to work, knew they had to get better if they want to get, if they want to be where they want to be at the end of the season, and that's further in the playoffs." Than a wild card and one one football game. No, correct. Now, they were the the prevalent feeling after last season was more so the fact that they didn't go farther than it was. Oh yeah, we made the playoffs. Yeah. And you mentioned the idea of all going the extra step. Well, Anthony Fasano told us today that in late March, not long after he signed, Ryan Tannehill was gathering some of his receivers around to throw yeah. throw passes and run routes. Uh, and Fasano was saying that most of the guys were there, and he he, he said I. With the teams I've been around throughout the league, I've never seen this level of participation, which, again, is a good sign in terms of the commitment of this team to do what it takes to take the next step. And, Alan, it follows, I, follow, I would follow that up with, with the, the thought of the, 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 the rookies that they brought in, in particular the draft choices. Obviously, the unrestricted free agents, you know, they'll play into this whole thing, and, and who knows, you know, every now and then you get one or two of those guys that pop out and, and become players for you. But certainly with the draft choices the, and, the, and the character of the guys – that you brought in. I think there's a synergy. You can see the guys when you talk to these these rookies that they're the type of characters that seem to fit into this into the framework of this football team. And I think I think Coach Gaze and the assistant coaches and the the personnel guys, Chris Greer, Mike Tannenbaum, have kind of gotten rid of the guys that that you know maybe were lack of effort guys, guys that didn't care so much, guys that weren't doing the right thing, and they, and they've kind of weeded them out. And it seems like all the guys they brought in, at least from the surface, and we haven't seen, uh, you know, really anything from them so far. But when you speak to them, you feel like the character fits the type of player that this football team 
wanted when they set out on draft weekend? Oh, no, no question. And the other thing about the draft choices is they seem to be all guys who maximize their abilities in college. Yep. Uh, looking especially at the top three guys, Charles Harris, Raekwon McMillan, Cordray Tankersley. These are not guys who, who like underachieved in college right. and you're hoping that maybe there's something better up there. They're guys who, who got what they did. What they could out of their ability yeah. and there's still more there obviously as they grow and as they learn uh and the other key with with the draft picks is what the dolphins did last year in terms of building their roster is they set themselves up in a position where now it's about adding depth and, and competition yeah. as opposed to filling holes yes uh, which has been the case of maybe the past few years well well to me i mean you know they had they had boxes they wanted to check off going into the draft they checked Certainly. off they checked off every one of those boxes doesn't mean every one of those boxes is going to be a starter in this football team. Correct. But you've got you had areas of need that they addressed from top to bottom uh, in this draft. Probably the one guy that uh, that, that really they didn't need was Isaiah Ford, but he's a guy that looks got some upsides, got some speed. Correct. You know, but but beyond that, you know, you got defensive tackles, you got an offensive guard, you, you got the the defensive end you wanted, uh, you, you got a linebacker you want, you got a cornerback. Right. So a lot of good things, and you got an offensive guard. Uh, along the way too, so uh, and they don't uh, desperately need for any of them to, to become be, a starter right, right away. Right, but I think the good thing about Joe uh, Joe Rose was on last week. We were talking about look, these guys just need to get in, get in the rotation. Correct, just to be the rotational player. And look, if you you know if that guy gets in the rotation, wh whether it's Harris, whether it's Tankersley, uh, wh whoever it's uh, whoever it is, McMillan, Asiata, whoever it is, if they can just get in the mix there, and then you hope one of them or two of them, the, the cream really rises to the top. And you get that that impact starter that can can make this the front line better, but you know your depth is definitely going to be better based on on the the positions you filled. Right. And again, I would say the growth of players last year, Alan, mm -hmm. that started the season at one level, and by the time the season was over, for the la for the for the amount of playing time, for the amount of big games, right. big situations, big plays, all those types of things, the quality of that of the depth got better. Just with the guys that were backups that had to play last year, they also have, the Dolphins also have a couple of guys who have big, big, big town who have not gotten to where to they fully, where they to fully realizing to right. their potential. Devontae Jordan Parker, Phillip, yep. Jordan Phillips yep. are the two who stand out. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and certainly there's been a lot of talk, an article in the paper yesterday about uh, Devontae Parker and, and what they're expecting out of him and how he's kind of changed. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it's that old story. Sometimes you need to learn to be a pro. Right. Sometimes you need to, you need to, it takes some guys a while to shed the college, you know, feeling where you can just go line up and, and, you know, yeah. not practice all week and go out and, and catch 10 balls for 180 yards and two mm -hmm. touchdowns. And you're like, yeah, this is easy. N not so easy when you get here. And sometimes it takes a while, uh, guys a little while to learn that. And they're hoping that Devonte has graduated past the, 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 the previous guy into the guy that's going to be a very, very successful pro over the next handful of years. No question, because, I mean, he's got all the, the, the physical skills. I mean, this guy is tall. He can run. He can make catches up in the air. He can win the one-on-one -on -one battles. Yeah. It's all there for him. But as you mentioned, at Louisville for him, it's basically just show up on Saturday yeah. and then I'll have a great game. Yeah. It's not quite as simple. Yet. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and get some questions. At uh, Kaleska. Yeah, I, I wonder if I'm I, – I just never figured, you know if I'm pronouncing the – pronouncing the – no Seleska, Kaleska, right there. Seleska, would you Seleska, at Seleska. Can you take away any new insight or knowledge of the players from these OTAs? Well, tomorrow after tomorrow, yes. I, I think the only thing, Alan, you can take away. Let me tell you, you've, you've had a chance to talk to uh, a handful of guys over the last two days. Who who said something that, that struck you or 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 – or just guys that you see that that, that impression. Certainly the guys, the, the Charles Harris, the new guys that are out there. Um, what have you liked? What have you been concerned about? They, well, the, the players we've talked to haven't mentioned anybody in terms of somebody we might not expect. I mean, there are a lot of the questions have been specifically about, for example, Jay Ajayi. How's Ryan Tannehill mm -hmm. looking? Uh, how's Laramie Tunsil looking at, at left tackle? And everything's been positive. And again, right now, it's still really, really early. Uh, what can you take from the OTAs? You can take in in the if they do bad drills with DBs yeah. against wide receivers, you can see some things there. You forget the offensive line, defensive line. Yeah. You can't really see no, a whole no. lot. Um, the OTAs is a lot more about installing your system, learning everything, yeah. more so than like really. Yeah, I mean individual battles, yeah. position battles. You, you know, it's funny. I'll, I remember this distinctly. 
I remember doing we, we didn't have OTAs, we had mini camps and, and this and that and off season conditioning. And I and I remember the mini camps and, and we you know, from for anyway, for my whole career we had one mini camp. That was basically it. Mm. And and that mini camp, I I mean, you worried we were you concerned about that mini camp all off season, you know, mostly because you had to run a twelve minute run. And that was probably the biggest concern. But you know, it was a it was a big thing because it was the one time you get together during the off season and you know the coaches are evaluating, is this guy been working out? Is he in mm-hmm. shape? Correct. All these types of things. And you know that's going on and you want to go out anytime you're on the football field, you want to impress out there and let these guys know. And, and so you kind of go in with an anxiety of, hey, I gotta go, I gotta show them something, I gotta do this or that. And then I, I would always get to late in the season, you know, November, December, big Monday night game against New England down here or Buffalo or the Jets or the Raiders or somebody. And I'd always sit there and, and think to myself, you know, all that BS from mini camp and everything. And, you know, where we're sitting right now means absolutely zero at this point, you know. Mm-hmm. But But at the time, it's... Hey, it's 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 the top of the heap. It's a you know yeah. it's, it's, it's the thing that's on your plate right there. You but know? it's all it's all yeah. It's a lot of all of that preparation for that one moment, and you yeah. hope that everything that you did helps you at that well, particular. I, well, moment. There's a, another big difference too is from from your to, from when you played to now is these guys show up in the spring and, and they're, they're already in, in great shape. Yes, I yeah. mean so yeah. That part of the equation is kind of out. Now it's basically, again, learning and retention and all that good stuff. Yeah, no doubt. But look, the, the other the other thing is, you know, I first came in the league, we had six preseason games. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you had nine weeks to um, – Nine weeks to get yourself in shape at yeah. training camp. No need to do it. During, no need to do all that during the off season because you knew you, you knew what was going to happen there. At uh, DFA seventy three, what's up, guys? How do you feel about the roster so far? Should we pick someone up? Pick someone else up in free agency? Are we in the same boat mode that we've been in the past? Where after June first, another wave of free agency kind of hits. As you look at out there, guys like Kaepernick are still out there. Uh, you got Nick Mangold out there. You've got uh, a handful of players that are still out there that have still have a little tread life on them, mm-hmm. still have some name recognition, still have done some good things in the league, and they're just out there waiting to get jobs right now. Gerald, someone's going to sign. Someone's going to sign some of those guys. Daryl Washington, Washington, who just got yeah. released after being reinstated by the NFL. Uh, look, will they definitively pick up somebody? We don't know that for sure. They're never going to. They're never going to stop looking to see right. if there's somebody out there who can help the roster. I think the Dolphins feel pretty good about what they have right now, in terms of depth and in terms of their frontline players. That said, the process of, of upgrading the roster and adding more competition, adding more depth, that never ends. Yeah, yeah. Always keep a look out there. You know, so that, that 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 you know, I, I, you'd hate you hate to be forty-seven to fifty-three. Correct. Because that's a churn. That that's just a oh, yeah. that's a revolving door there. You know, so you you know, you get that you get that last few weeks of seeing you go, where that guy come from? You yeah, know, absolutely, no question. <laughs> you gotta keep up with the roster. Um, at Kappa for Life twenty three, has Miami signed their first round pick yet? Charles Harris not signed yet. Not yet. Um, but, I mean, but with the new with the new CBA in place, yeah. usually that's not that's not a major. Yeah, issue. usually usually it's what what are they? It's the um, what do they call it? The setback. What is it? The they're they're they're, they're, uh, yeah, yeah. they're trying to get yeah I know what happened with Joey Bosa last year the offset uh, language offset language there if, you, you if you end up going somewhere else they got to pick up part of your salary right. yeah. that, that seems to be the only sticking point right Correct. in the it whole happened thing with Joey Bosa last Joey year Joey Bosa what, yeah. what a stupid 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 yeah it's usually but, right. I certainly wouldn't sweat out the fact that Charles Harris isn't signed yet no I, I wouldn't no 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 it's it's just certainly look if he's not signed when when the when training camp starts then get your dander up but now now's not the time to do that. Uh, at Eman U four U fifty five is that brace necessary or just precaution? Did you see, did you see the brace? Yeah, was it was on the video. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't yeah, see it. That's, that's is a brace necessary? Or just pre- I, I don't know. I don't know if the it's answer is yes, yes, or precautionary. Yeah, yes, I mean with both. Yeah. Well, why would why would my my question would be is this: it, Is it just precautionary or is it necessary? Two no, different things. No, I know what, I, what I'm but what I'm saying is. Why wouldn't then you not have it? If it's not hindering his movement, why, not? why would you not have why, it? Why not? Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, I'm with my, my guess is he... I, my, I, again, my, no, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't studied yeah. his medical no, no. chart. but And as, as, as Coach Case always says, I'm, I'm few, not a doctor. few degrees short of my medical yeah. degrees. I, I would guess that it's precautionary. If it's necessary, I don't know that he would be out there running around. 
You, you know, sometimes, sometimes you get hurt, and sometimes you just want to know there's something there. Right. You know, and, and you may never use it. I remember doing stuff where you put a brace on, and after a while you say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm good. Let me get rid of this thing. But, right. but look, for, look, I think for a quarterback that's had a knee situation, and, and if you can wear a brace that's going to protect you, I, I think it's the right thing to do. No, and by definition, if it wasn't necessary, it means it would still be an issue with the right. knee and he wouldn't be out there. Right. So right. there's your answer. It's precautionary. Yeah. Uh, black man game. After watching today, <laughs> what what guy stood out? I, I wish well, I we could didn't tell watch you. Today. You know, it's close to – I tell you, the only if you want to find out what's going on in the field, go to Norland High School and ask those guys yeah. what was going on. Or and go Hall- to Hallandale, Hallandale High. High. Hallandale High was there today. How how good has that got to be for these college, oh, these high school yeah. kids to be able to come out to an NFL practice, yeah. stand on the field, watch these guys practice, talk to them, be able to kind of ask them questions and stuff. For for both for the players and coaches, it's got to be pretty pretty awesome situation. No, and there them. was a video on Dolphins.com of, of Isaac, uh, Isaac Asiata yeah. w- walking on the field, talking to a Orleans player. I right. mean, how great has that got to be for that kid? I sure. mean, he's, he's going to remember that the rest of yeah, his life. Yeah, good, good stuff. So, But yeah, look, we'd like to give you more information about what's going on out on the field, but uh, we don't get a chance tomorrow, as I said. Uh, it is open to the media, so we'll get a chance to watch them tomorrow. So Friday, we'd have a, a, a little bit more. Um, uh at Casimiro 2003, or do you think the Dolphins, do you think the Dolphins can knock off the Patriots? Well, that's the, you know, that, that's the goal. I mean, that's you know, I mean, look, um, Jarvis Landy threw it out when he was in London. Hey, I think we can beat him. We need to beat him twice. But what, what, else, him what twice. else is he going to say? What are you going to say? Mean, I mean, gonna look, say? you're going to go out. You know, I, how many games are you going to win this season? Well, I think we're going to win 14 yeah, exactly. games. I mean, what are you supposed to say? Eh, maybe if we can win five or six, we'd be happy, you know? You know, I'll, I'll have the definitive answer on that one January 1st. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. No doubt about it. Um, but look, you know, the, I, can, I, can, I can offer this question to you in the offseason. Do you think, the, you think the Dolphins have closed the gap on the New England Patriots? Uh, again, it's hard to say. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, New England's done a lot of good things. I mean, yep. Brandon Cooks. The jump they named that jumped out. They they picked up a couple of other guys too. They they've had a really good off season <laughs> you know, too. Problem, and the Dolphins have had a good off season. The problem with New England, the problem, and they have Tom Brady. Problem well, that's that's problem one with New, with New England. They got Tom Brady. Problem two is historically since Belichick has been there, they made very few mistakes when they've gone out and picked guys up. Uh, there were free agents. I'm not talking about draft choices because their drafting hasn't been. They haven't set the world on fire with their draft choices. No, and that's but free agent wise, he always seems to know when to pick them up. More importantly, when to let mm-hmm. them go. And, and so, anytime you pick someone up, you go, oh, you know, Mike Gillisley. You go, oh, geez, he, he, you know, if he picked up Mike Gillisley, he sees something that he feels he can take advantage of that Mike Gillisley does. And yeah, maybe, maybe but, other people have. But see, you know, I see. I think that pickup was overrated to me because Mike Gillisley had a great I, average last year, but yes. he also played. Behind a very good Buffalo yep. run blocking offensive line, they led the league Understand. in rushing. So Understand, I think but, that's a little over. But what, the point I'm making is, you give Bill Belichick the benefit of the doubt, just oh, based absolutely. off his past the history. Equity he's built up, and yes, he's got a reason move. to pick up yeah. that guy. And and you know, like I was telling, I told you before the draft, I, I was I was hoping beyond hope that New England wouldn't end up with uh, with the kid McCaffrey out of Stanford, no. because he would have been the perfect guy to go on that roster, and Bill Belichick would he would have. He'd use that guy every way possible. But even without him, they, they always, no, they always, always do. Always find a way on no, offense. No. I mean, now they, and they picked up Brandon Cooks from the Saints. Yeah. I mean, he's going to make, yeah, make an yeah, impact on you know, that offense. We'll find out if we close the gap, as uh, like you yeah. said. As a, it, it's not going to be till late in the season you find out, but uh, we'll find out eventually. Twice in three weeks. Yep. Yeah. At King Edlin Bow, that polo is dope. Must be straight off the truck. I'm going to tell you what. <clears throat> I was down at the stadium today. I had a shirt on with the old logo. The old logo, and uh, I said, "Look, I'm gonna wear this on the audible." Like, oh no, no, you need a new shirt. And I knew I wasn't gonna wear that shirt on the on the audible, but you know, there's new and shirts here, later. Right? Like, well, I'm gonna unless, unless you want to give me a new shirt. So yeah, it did. It came right out of right out. It's like going to the dentist when he used to give you like a, a toothbrush and a piece of gum or something. There you know, go. yep. That's what I got. I got a shirt. Um, at Anthony Giandi, uh, what impact would the Finns sweeping the Patriots? have on the nation's view of this team. <clears throat> well, I'm going to assume that if the Dolphins sweep the Patriots, they're going to be in a pretty good situation when it comes to standing-wise and playoff-wise. And I think, the, look, 
I think you know, that would, would garner a lot of a whole lot of respect around the yes, country. That's for sure. Yes, I mean, that's, you sweep the Patriots. I think a lot of people. I think a lot of the eyebrows start raising uh, if you beat the Patriots and that go, in, that, in this division. That would go for the Bills or the Jets too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Any team can sweep, any sweep team, the yeah. Patriots. Um, at uh, Roach Coach Fifteen, I need some Bo Camper wings with some Tito and tonic after a Dolphin victory. Well, I hope you need it about. I wouldn't mind seeing you need that about twelve times this year. I'm not going to get greedy. Go. 12 is plenty, right? 12, 12 works. 12 is more than 10. Got to get more than you had last year, right? Yes. <laughs> I have to do the math there quickly. Uh, I can tell you this. if they Even if they won 16 games, we've had plenty, we'd have plenty of wings and plenty of Tino, Tito's and Tonic for you uh, after they win all those. Um, Periscope, are there any no-shows at, uh, at OTAs? Is there anybody that, uh, that hasn't made it to the OTAs? You know, the only guy that you would think yeah. of that may not would, would maybe be Jarvis as he's kind of – you know, waiting for his contract, but there was never any indication that he was going to skip OTAs no, over the contract correct. situation. Um, and then Dominic and Sue, who sometimes has done some offseason work yeah, in, in, in Oregon, in Oregon yeah. spoke to the media on Tuesday, so obviously he's So here. he's here, yeah. So, but he has um, taken Jordan Phillips out to... Uh, to uh, yes, Oregon. Oregon to, uh, mm-hmm. to work with him a little bit. Yep. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to... Not not that you want to document it, or you, you would want to document it, but... My say, it would just be interesting to see how, how they uh, go about their workouts out there and then and, and, and the conversations, you know what I mean? Yep. Sometimes those conversations are more important or as important than, than what they're doing uh, in, in the weight room or in the conditioning program out there. No question, because you look at Jordan Phillips and it looks like it's all there. He, he's, made it, he, he's made a couple of plays since he's been with yep. the Dolphins where you go, whoa, this yep. guy can be good. It's just not there down in, down out. Where it's it's pretty much there every down yep. with Sue and obviously they're not the same guy. Uh, not fair to expect the same thing, but you just want a little bit more consistency yep. from Phillips, yep. especially this year because they don't have a lot of proven commodities right. at defensive tackle. Jordan Phillips is very important to the Dolphins yep. in 2017. Uh, at uh, Legends Leonidas, uh, do you believe it's all about our defense this season because our O line is looking okay for now? Look offensively, is there is there there's still a there's still a, there's a modicum of concern for me at the guard positions. I think they've got guys that can come in and compete. Ted Larson comes in. I'm a guy that thought Bushrod had a pretty decent year last year. I'm very yeah. comfortable with Bushrod over there and this kid Asiata. Let let those guys let those guys you know have it on the other side. Keep Bushrod in there and 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 just let the best guy come out and play. But here, here's what I would ask you. I, I would counter that by asking you: Can you name any of the guards? On New England or Atlanta, the two Super Bowl teams last year. No. So, to me, the offensive line it matters without question. The tackles, to me, are a lot more important than yep. your guards. Uh, and with Tunsil and Juwan James, I think the Dolphins are very solid there. Yep. So, Let me tell you, Juwan's got to pick up his game a little bit this he year. He does, no question. He'll play a little better he, than he no did question, last year. But he's shown, it, he's shown that he can do it. Yeah. He, had, he had kind of a little bit of a, of a downslide last year. Uh, but it's there. I think they're okay on the offensive line. It's not all about the defense. The defense does have to improve. The offense it, it, has to continue yeah. to do what it did last year. But look, the defense. There's no question. The defense. And and, and look, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, to me, the, the only stat I want to see them improve on is points against. Correct. You know that, that to me. All the other numbers. And look, you can you can look at the. I know I know the number is 4.8 yards per carry. Mm-hmm. Average over 400 yards a game. What was it? Rushing. I don't forget the number was. But big numbers defensively. Yeah. <clears throat> you still won 10 games. You still found a way to win games. Correct. And you look defensively, there were a lot of big plays made, yeah. you know, out there on the on the field. So it, to me, it's just about being a little more disciplined, tightening things up a little bit, not giving up as many big plays while continuing to come up with the big plays that you were able to come up with last year. And I and I would tell you, to me, one big source of optimism on defense is it looks to me like they have some playmaking at linebacker more so yes. than they have in recent years. Yes. I like the acquisition of Lawrence Timmons. Yep. Raekwon McMillan was a big-time player at yep. Ohio State. Uh, and then you have Kiko Alonso coming back after yep. making a lot of plays last year. Yeah, and I feel pretty I feel pretty good. At, I feel pretty good about the makeover at the linebacker position. You know, to me, the wild card a little bit is Cole Misi. Um, you know, can he stay healthy and, and compete with Correct. those guys and and you know and, and get in the rotation? Um, but I but I'm look, I'm I'm I knew going into last season, you're sitting there looking at linebackers going, oh, man, they need to, they need some help there. And, Correct. And cornerback-wise, but they've answered those questions. It, it, you know, we'll see if they've answered those questions. Certainly they've got bodies in there that you expect to make those positions better. 
Well, no question. And then you're looking at cornerback. Byron Maxwell was playing lights out before yep. he got hurt at the end of last year. And then Xavier Howard Xavier's looked, a big looked time pretty point. good. Looks, I mean, he, yeah. he got hurt. But, I mean, if those two are in there and they're – Playing at their peak or playing solid, yeah. they're in good shape. Look, Xavier, to me, you can put him over there by and line him up there now and be your starter. Yeah, I, no I think he's oh, that no kind question. of. He, I mean, when he was healthy, and, and I tell you, one to me, one of the most impressive things when he wasn't expected to, he wasn't expected really to play in 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 New York against the Jets, mm -hmm. and and who got hurt? One of the cornerbacks, Maxwell, got, Maxwell hurt. got hurt. So you throw him early in the game, and he just shut down Brandon Marshall. He did. You know, with you know, the, you know, not having played, been hurt, getting on the field. So I think this guy, I think this guy's really going to be a very, very good uh, cornerback for us. Um, uh, definite maybe. Does having a tougher schedule help you going into? The, does having a tougher schedule help you going into the playoffs? I'm, well, just getting into the playoffs helps you going into the playoffs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that's from <laughs> football one on one here. Yeah, that's I mean, basically that's that's the basics. But look, I. I you know, I I know people, I know people, grip on the schedule and look how tough it is. But especially in the league, especially the way the league is now, I see the schedule to me is is a very fluid thing. No question. And, and that's why I, I look. I've always been a guy, and maybe it's just because I played you know my whole life that there was a one game at a time guy. You may look at the schedule. Usually, look at the schedule to see, oh, we're going to uh, New Orleans. I get to go to my favorite restaurant yeah. in New Orleans, or I get to go to my favorite restaurant. In Baltimore, that's that's about the the, the, the size yeah. of it, at least from my recollection. Recollection was, um, but look, you, you look at take take New England for example. You're going to play New England, uh, you know, and and and, and they they start out four and zero, oh, and you're playing them week five, and in week four they lose Gronkowski and they lose uh, correct, and they lose Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. They're not the same team that you looked at in the schedule before correct. the season started, and that's just the way it is. And so I, I've never looked at the schedule in. I know I know where this team wants to be, and I know where I want this team to be. Whereas I don't care who we're going to line up and play, as long as we play our game as well as we can, we'll win. No, and that's where you want. I guarantee you, that's New England's frame of mind. No, no question. Our game. But you go into this 2017 season, and yes, it appears the schedule is tougher than it was yeah. last year. No question. But you don't know. I mean, who's to say that Atlanta, who's on the Dolphins' schedule? Doesn't take a major step back. Right. Who's to say Tampa Bay, which was on the verge of the playoffs, doesn't take a big step forward? Correct. You right. just don't yes. know from year to year. Yeah. On the on the face of it, though, yes, the schedule does appear. Tough well, right. look at Carolina. Carolina comes out of a Super Bowl. You look at a schedule. Anyone that saw Carolina on their schedule goes, "Oh man, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get." And then they, they couldn't get out of their own way. So, right. you know, it's 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 you just you just never know. And I understand we're looking at the schedules and. And trying to pick who's going to win or lose, but uh, I don't know. I just I try to stay away from that. That Smoky Mountain Fin fan, hey Kim, do you think the Dolphins will be working on blocking more punts and kicks this year? I think they work on it hard. I think they work on a lot. Yeah, they, one of the defensive they, tackles they drafted or Vincent Taylor, Taylor. Gotcha yep. Taylor had like five block kicks. He did. Uh, you know, uh, and, during, during his college career. And one of the rookie free agents, they signed a linebacker by the name of Chase Allen. Yeah. I, they think it was like four blocked field goals. Look, they, they, they can't spend any more time on it than they yes. do. Darren Rizzi does a great job yep. of attacking every aspect of special teams. Yep. Uh, I mean, well, look, you, you can't you, ask for more big plays well, than they got on special teams No, well, look at I Walt mean, Aiken. Walt Aiken yep. blocks a punt, takes it in the end mm -hmm. zone, and then picks up at the next week, picks up a two-point conversion. Yep. Runs it all the way back, or you know, and so and they had two kicks for returns for touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think that's a look. They're they're going to try to block every kick. Well, not that you're going to try to block every kick, but I mean uh, they're certainly going to be ready to do that. But I think they've taken away they have taken away the rule you can't leap over the center anymore. Correct. Correct. That's that thing that was that became in vogue in the last couple of years is Correct. is out now. So you know there used to be a, there used to be an easy way to to resolve that. Is just when that guy starts to jump, the center snaps the ball, and you kind yeah, of zero in there. right there. And then, and then they used to stop guys from jumping over the that top. Would, that would do it, yes. In a, in a big way. Um, at uh, Julie Tony, what do you think? Uh, what do you think of all the wide receivers we signed? Well, we signed uh, Kenny Stills. Yeah. What, what else yeah. did we sign? They signed like, I believe, two rookie free agents. Well, you got I, your, I'm going to assume that's Isaiah not Ford. who. I'm going to assume that's not who he's talking about. They signed maybe, a kid from maybe, the University of Miami. Yeah, right. Uh, Malcolm Lewis. They signed Drew Morgan from Arkansas. I'm going to assume that's I, not I who he's talking gonna, about. I think, I think it's going to be tough for any of these guys to squeeze in uh, and, and, and buy playing time out of it. First of all, Carew's going to get the first opportunity right. to steal playing time. 
Uh, and and then Jakeem Grant, they still and then Jakeem Grant, you want to see if he can yeah. he can get get involved, but he's got to he's got to prove that he can catch the football. And the other thing is, don't forget, you got Julius Thomas out there. He's going to take some of those balls. So um, I don't know. I, I think the receivers. Look, I think I think Isaiah Ford, a draft, he's going to have a tough, 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 tough oh, time yeah. trying to find the football field. You know, unless he comes out and just lights things up. Uh, you know. He, well, he's forget about time. forget about that. Forget it. just making the roster is not going to be easy yeah, for no, any. Because right. if you look, the five they had last year are back. Yep. Uh, and again, they are very high on the potential of what Jakeem Grant can Jakeem yep. Grant can do because of his explosiveness. Yep. And Leonte Carew is a guy who's got some upside. And yeah, it's good. So, uh, it's and a, the top gonna, three, obviously, that's going to be a tough. That's going to be a tough room to squeeze into. I'll put it to you that way. Yep. A uh, man called and a man called Jane with all the new defensive talent. Do you think Hall and Hewitt should be nervous? I think Hewitt kind of locked himself in. I think I think Neville Hewitt played well enough last year to uh, to where it, I, I think that and he plays well enough on special teams. I would think that he's going to be in the best position. My call may be a little different. May, may, he may have to. He may have to. He may have to. He'll, Dig it out a little he, bit. Yeah, he'll have to fight for a roster spot, but he's a guy who's tremendous yep. on special teams. Yep. Darren Rizzi loves him. Yeah. Um, so, in the end, if it comes on the uh, push to shove with, with two guys fighting for a spot, that's going to help him out. But yep. it's not going to be easy for him. No. Uh, Periscope, how much do you think the Dolphins will improve uh, on their tackling this year percentage-wise? You know, tackling is tough. Tackling, tackling is tough in this league anymore only because you never get to practice. 13.82 is. That's the percentage. How much are you going to improve on their tackling? That's what you're 13. Well, he's, he's asking for a percentage, 13.82. <laughs> that's what I'm going to go about. Well, they're going that, 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 That's a – look, t- tackling to me in this league is is certainly for the first month of the season is is uh, is iffy at best. T- well, but you mentioned that because of the new rules, there's not as much contact. Well, you know, you know, so it's tough. You you can't get better tackling. You, you can't get better at tackling right. Right. during the season. You can't. You can't even get better tackling during the preseason, okay? Because there's because there's no you know you don't you don't you don't do tackling drills you don't do and now you're tackling dummies and and this and that and until you can get a dummy that can uh, can throw a move on you like Jay Ajayi or or one of these other guys or Ezekiel Elliott then uh, yeah. you know it's not going to be the same thing. But you can go by the law of, of of averages. They did not tackle particularly well. well a lot of times last year, you figure yeah. it's going to get better. I, it, it better it it has to yeah, it has to get if better. they want to be where they want to be at the end of the year they're tackling. Has to get a lot better, and their entire fundamental defensive play has to get better. Running around blocks has got to stop. Getting up field, forcing people back inside, that's got to be more of a uh, you know of a positive form. All those things are, are going to make you better, and and your tackling's got to get. But better. along those lines, also remember that last year, for for good periods of time, both Kiko Alonso yep. and Jelani Jenkins played with like cast or yep. clubs on their hands. It's not easy to well, tackle. And, and, when and you Jelani got was was. Johnny was banged one up, leg, was one banged leg up the whole the year. Time. And Kiko, I, I remember watching Kiko at the end of the year. I think what he had for the last month, he had a cast on, yeah, or like a broken thumb, and, and and like he couldn't he couldn't even get an arm. I mean, most of the time he's trying to trip guys up, get underneath them, just trying yeah. to get them to to trip over him. Those kind of block, those kind of right. things that that normally he wouldn't do if he didn't have the cast on. So you know that that being healthy that wise uh, is it. at uh, Mandarino thirteen. Which player drives the craziest car? I don't even know which cars. Guys are driving out there these days. All I know is I see some Bentleys out there and big trucks with big giant wheels and whatnot. And I have not ventured into the players' parking lot. I'll tell you who drives honest. the craziest car that I've seen. Kenny Stills. What's he drive? Kenny Stills is a big fan of the old the old Volkswagen uh, buses. Oh, he got oh, the he's bus. got an old okay, bus. Okay. Yeah, he's got an old bus. And I talked to him about it. I think he wants to, you know... Uh, refurbish it and do that whole thing with it. Southern California kid kind yeah. of goes with it, right? <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't mind getting one myself. I love those old buses. So, but uh, yeah, I would say that's it. Oh, Jared Odrick used to drive like a like a. Jared really used to have that little. Car, he used to have that little Fiat. Yeah, uh, a really small uh, car. Tiny, yeah, one of those mini, mini Fiats or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah almost yeah. like a smart car or yeah. like a. Yeah. It was funny looking. Especially All right, with him getting in there. All right, Al, that's gonna do it for us today, man. I hope we gave you something. You know, it would be nice if we were out in practice and been able to give you a little bit more insight on what's going on out there. But we gave you what we had. All we, we can say, we can say they all look they all look great, but that would be just. I've I've never seen them looking any better, Alan. There you go. I've never seen them looking any better, or worse, to be honest with you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> since, I, since you haven't seen anything at all, 
Leon, thank you very much. Another great job by you back there. Trey, leave him in the background. When, you're, when, you're, when you do the job by yourself, Leon, it always comes out first class. How about that? All right, Al. Appreciate it, my man. Uh, we'll always catch you again next time. Absolutely. That's the Audible. We'll catch you again on Friday. Hopefully, we got a little more for you then. We'll see you then.